Due to the technical nature of this particular video and our awareness that many people will want notes or slides, much of the presentation will provide you with the content in slide and technical video form, making it a tremendous takeaway for future reference. Today, John, we're going to talk about product tests. Oh, man, that's that's exciting gripping. stuff. Gripping. Gripping. It's well, some, sometimes you do grip the product. We're going to talk about that. Test. Okay. You're going to help us understand this a lot better. There's a lot of tests in our industry, and for this video, we'll go over various uh, uh, coated fabrics, performance attributes, and most common tests done for each. Right. Time. Things you've probably heard of, but may, maybe weren't quite sure what they meant. One of the first tests that we talk about is tear strength. Right. The tear strength is to determine the resistance to further tearing once the material has been cut. There are two types of tear strength tests. One is called tongue tear and one is called trap tear. Tongue tear is where they put a single rip or single tear. A cut is usually three inches long in the warp direction, that's the cross machine direction, and the material is then clamped into a test machine and pulled. The trap tear is usually used on non-woven back materials and that's where they actually make a trapezoid and they put the material in a clamp and they tear it. Tensile strength, that's to determine the pulling force that's required to rupture or tear the coated fabric. And in this case, a sample that's four inches by six inches is cut in both the warp and fill directions, clamped on both sides in a long direction and then pulled. The requirement or the load necessary to rupture or tear the material should not be less than 50 pounds in both the warp and fill directions. Seam strength is to simulate the resistance to a seam tearing. It's a very simple test where they actually put a needle and thread on a clamp and they pull the thread through the material to see how many pounds of pressure it takes for the material to break. Adhesion tests. Yeah, adhesion, it once again, is very important because it determines the amount of strength it takes for the backing to delaminate from the material, which you don't want to happen. So in the adhesion tests, you put the material in a clamp and you pull, and usually you don't want any less than four pounds of tension needed before the material breaks. You want it to exceed four pounds for adhesion. Stretch and set. Stretch and set would simulate, for instance, to determine if the material is going to puddle very easily. So you elongate the material for a period of time, then you put it on a table after it's done elongating, you see how long it takes to recover and to what percentage it recovers. Usually to pass an elongation test or a stretch and set test, you want the material to at least recover more than 90% of the way. Now let's talk about flex resistance. Flexing is something that... Um, you do with your arms? What is that all about? Um, that's to determine the resistance of a coat of fabric to crazing, cracking, and fabric delamination. You actually put the material in a little machine that makes the material go back and forth and back and forth, so it's bending the finish to see if the finish on the material will then crack after a period of time or craze. And if you know what crazing is, that's when it turns white. Or in that back and forth motion is the fabric delaminating from the material. So that would be flex resistance to see how the material is going to wear over a period of time after it's been flexed from people getting up and sitting down and getting up and sitting down. Crock resistance, not to be confused with crock pot resistance. I hate crock pots. Right. Crock resistance is to determine the resistance of transferring fabric dyes to the surface of the coated fabric by rubbing. So in other words, and there's a wet test and a dry test. So a wet test would be like if you were in your bathing suit and you're sitting on a piece of coated fabric, uh, how much it's gonna take before any dyes come off that bathing suit. And the dry test, it's the same thing, but it would just simulate like blue jeans being a big problem. Blocking is when there's an upholstery application where somehow the material comes face to face for instance, in a booth application where you've got the booth back and the booth base, and there's a part where the two come together. And if you have to pull the cushion off and it's sticking to the top part, that would force the film layer to come off. That would not pass the blocking test. How do we me measure mildew resistance? The actual test is an ASTM test. It's ASTM G21 by placing the material the material samples in mineral salts with various mixed fungal spores and then you incubate them for 28 days at 82 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and then you measure the surface growth. Antibacterial testing. Is to determine the degree of bacterial activity and growth on the surface of coated fabrics. The basic test method for that is AATCC 147, where the test sample is actually streaked with different bacteria, like samples and incubated at 99 degrees Fahrenheit, then examined to see if the bacteria has increased past the zone of inhibition. There are two basic flame categories. One is an open flame test, and one is a surface burn test. Most of the requirements we get for commercial application are simply surface burn tests. They would include tests such as California Technical Bulletin 117, NFPA 260, UFAC Class 1. Most coated fabrics will pass these tests without any additional treatment to the material itself. An open flame test, you cut a strip and you put it over a Bunsen burner and what you do is you measure A, how long it takes for the flame to go out, how long the char length was after the flame went out, and that determines whether the material passes or fails. The most common open flame tests are at Motor Vehicle Safety Standard 302 or MVSS 302, New York and New, New Jersey Port Authority test, NFPA 701, and your Boston Fire Department test. Well, we hope you found this video educational. There's a lot of material to get through, but these are all really important tests in our industry. If you did like it, please subscribe and share below. If you have any questions, please leave your comments below. Thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you.